Hi everybody, welcome to my big tidy up. Now, if you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Dee Dee. I'm glad you've joined me on my channel today. On this channel, you'll find that we focus on organizing, decluttering, cleaning, simple life hacks, simple decor, simple DIY. Do you get the keyword simple? easy things, things that can make your life easier. And today is no different. Today we are focusing on decluttering. Now don't let that word make you nervous because sometimes we say the word declutter and people get overwhelmed. They start having anxiety. They think of decluttering as like this huge mountain in the sky that they've got to climb and they'll never get to the top and they'll never get it under control. Well, I'm here to tell you that today is the day because today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some tips and tricks to declutter, to get you to clutter, and to keep you decluttered. And I'm gonna share some different methods of decluttering so that you can find a way that works just right for you. So regardless of your home style, regardless of your household size, there's a way that you can get your decluttering under control. I wanna thank you for joining me today. So without any further ado, let's get going and let's get tidy. Well, friends, one thing that helps me when I need to declutter is to come up with a plan. Now, the best plan would be is to not let things get cluttered in the first place. Then I wouldn't have to go back and declutter something. But since I can't seem to execute that plan, I have to come up with another one. And so since we're all different, we all get motivated by different things. We all work differently. Sometimes you just have to come up with a plan that works best for you. So what works best for me may not work best for you or what works best for you may not work best for your neighbor. That's okay, there's more than one way to get decluttering done. Now, several months ago, actually it was right at the beginning, it was probably longer than several months ago, I did a video about three major ways that you could declutter. Now, I will link that video below, but don't worry, you don't have to watch that whole thing because I'm gonna hit the high points today and you can go back and watch it if you want more details. But really, I talk about three different strategies that can help you get decluttered. One strategy, is called two and two. So you're gonna walk into a room, you have two minutes, and you're gonna get everything out of that room, you're gonna take things out of that room, and when the two minutes is up, you're done. Sometimes that can help you not feel so overwhelmed. You know you're just gonna go in for a little bit, it's not like you're gonna do the whole project if you've got a big area that needs to clutter. This is just taking small little bites out of the apple. So you're just gonna go in, you've got two minutes, you take what you can, and you're off to the next room. And really, you know when the project's gonna end because you can just multiply how many rooms times two minutes, and then you're done. Or if you're feeling ambitious, you can make it five minutes. Or if you're new and you know you get overwhelmed, just one minute in each room and you will be surprised on what a difference that can make. Strategy number two, pick a number. Now that is just picking a number on how many items you want to clear out of a certain space. Now you can do a room, I'm gonna find two things in this room, or I'm gonna declutter five things that I don't use in this room. Or if you're like in a bedroom where you've got different, what I would call zones, maybe you've got your dresser, maybe you've got your jewelry box or your closet, then you can just pick a number. I'm gonna take two items from each zone. And so it makes you make some hard choices, but it's a quick fix. You're in and out and it adds up because again, if you take just two items from each room or each storage place, before you know it, you've got 20 things and you've got a good declutter going on. And strategy number three, I think this is the hardest strategy. I call it the trifecta because it's more thoughtful. You have to do a little bit of thinking and it doesn't move quite as fast, but it may be something if you want a slower pace and you wanna take and look at each item and not make quick decisions, then this may be the tip for you. And the trifecta is that when you take an item, you're gonna look at the items in your room or your problem areas and you're gonna think three different things. I either need to give it away and donate it, and it needs to stay donated, not give it and then get it back. Or two, you've got to trash it, 
or three, you've got to repurpose it. And by repurposing it, that means that you really have to be committed on, if you're gonna take this vase and make it into something else, you're really gonna have to do it. And that's one way by taking a slower approach, you can look at each item and decide, what am I gonna do with it? Trash, donate, or repurpose. One thing that can be really helpful is to assign every single item in your home a certain place that it stays. Now, this is where we keep our mail. It's right here by the back door. And I have given myself a small storage area for my mail. You can see it's just got three little slots. And I try to get my mail taken care of every day because paper declutter is one thing that can get all of us and sneak up on us so fast. Well, by having these three slots, there is no room for overflow. There's a little room here in the back. Should I get some magazines that I need to go through or a catalog? But this is where the mail goes. I don't make exceptions and I don't have a lot of room because I didn't make a big area to keep my mail. I provided a small space, so that will keep me honest because I haven't given myself any extra room to put the mail. Here is another area that I've tried to make a small storage solution. I used to have a bigger basket and it was wicker and you really couldn't see inside of it. Well, I downsized and I made my container smaller. So I only can go to this line right here or the magazines will go out the side. So every time my magazines or a catalog, they get up to this height, it's time for me to go through them all. Now, when I'm decluttering my magazines, I sort them into three different piles, a keep pile, and that's a definite keeper for sure, and then share pile number one and share pile number two. Now, the keep magazines, of course, I'm just gonna keep them, but the two share piles, I divide those up depending on if the magazine is current and if it's been gently reused or if it looks like it's been run through the ringer. Now, the first share pile, if it's a current magazine that's only just a few weeks or a month old and it is in good condition, I like to share those with places that have a waiting room, such as a doctor's office, a vet's office, a dentist's office, or any kind of clinic or business that may have a waiting room that would appreciate the magazines. And then in the share pile too, the ones that maybe aren't quite so perfect or maybe they're several months old or maybe a year old, who wants to admit that, but it could be. Or if I cut a recipe out of them, I like to share those with schools. I can guarantee you if you call your local elementary school or even a middle school or a high school, there is a teacher there, especially an art teacher, that will gladly take your old magazines for current projects. Earlier I was talking about where my mail was going, and that's the rule, and that's where the mail will stay. Well, I had made a rule as well. Downstairs in the basement, all the DVDs stay underneath the television. Well, I changed TV cabinets, as you guys well know if you've been with me a while, and so I lost a little bit of space, but I made that rule, so I downsized, and I have made all my DVDs fit in here, and that was the rule, so I stuck to it. Well, behind this door is my biggest obstacle to keeping my home decluttered. And when I open this door, you may find that it may be a huge obstacle for you. And there they are. It's those dreaded boxes they deliver to our front door. It's the shopping we do. It's the extra things that we bring into our home. And sometimes we think, well, I haven't gone anywhere. I haven't been shopping. Well, that's the unfortunate and fortunate thing. We don't have to go. It comes to us. So if you're looking to declutter, that may be one way you can start is by limiting how many times you order products online and have them delivered. If you have something coming every week, maybe go every other week. 
If you have something coming every other week, maybe once a month. But whatever you do, this is one way you can definitely cut back. We can put ourselves on a shopping diet. To do everything you said you would Frame stop the past and The memory of you just come running by Pictures of Well, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely have what I would call some hot spots in my house, some clutter catchers, and I have them kind of scattered throughout the house. There's a couple of different areas, but some of them are right here by my doors by my front door because it's kind of a walk through as I'm going up to the stairs. So I have a tendency to leave something right here on this credenza or I put it over there as I come in the back door. Well, it was starting to become a problem because I would stack one thing and then before I know it, I was stacking something else and my pile was getting higher and I wasn't getting it put up. So what I've decided to do was kind of block those areas. So instead of having my decor in the back, I just slid it forward. And I know it sounds like such a simple fix, but I almost had to barricade myself. You know how sometimes you have to put a baby gate up to keep your baby safe? Well, I had to kind of barricade myself so I wouldn't put anything there. And this decor bowl I had, and we were constantly throwing keys even though there's a key rack right there. Well, I filled it with some little gratitude rocks, and now we don't end up putting anything in that bowl anymore. Well, I've stepped into my kitchen because in my kitchen, I definitely have a problem area. This area gets me every time. I really have to use my own tricks to try to keep myself decluttered in this particular area. Now, I don't know, it may not be a problem for you, but if it is, take a look, here's what I do. Well, here's the problem area. It's my kitchen utensils and where I keep them. Now, I do go through and I do declutter these, but sometimes I'll have a utensil and I think, oh, I'll use that, but I really don't. So I learned a long time ago a way to test it if you're looking to declutter. You take your utensil just out of your drawer, use it as you normally would, but when you're done with it, put it in a container and keep it on your cabinet. And then when you need something else and you're cooking your next meal, grab the utensil you need, but every time it's been washed, it goes back into the plastic container on your cabinet. And then after a month or so, you'll see if you really do use everything because what you're using in that plastic container is what you're probably gonna use most of the time. Now, when I learned this, I learned it, they used a tub, but I didn't want a plastic tub sitting out all the time. So you can just take a nice decanter, a nice jar and keep everything there and you will see, it won't lie, you'll see what you really do use. Now I use this same testing technique in other rooms as well. It works great in the kitchen for small utensils and things like that, but you can use this in other rooms as well. And I just don't share these tips. I actually use them and I'm using it right now because I feel like I have too much makeup. I have makeup that I don't use. And so I'm trying it out. I've got a little acrylic tub over here and everything that I'm gonna use for the next month, so far everything I've used has fit in that container and I've been doing it a couple of weeks. So I'll go a couple of more weeks, but I have a feeling a lot of this makeup is stuff that I never use or I think I'm gonna use, but I won't. Now, I would be lying if I said that I would get rid of all of this makeup because after a couple of more weeks, I'm probably not gonna, but at least it will make me be mindful about what I'm purchasing. It will make me think about it before I purchase it again, or even if it's on sale, it will help me remain under control and not buy it just because it's on sale or I think I need it because this little test is gonna prove to me I won't use it. There's so many places you can use this little test on to see if you really do use your products or not. I recently did this with all of my hair supplies, but I did leave one thing behind. And before you guys call me out on it, because this was in a video probably a year ago, if it's still in the package a year later, it's probably time to get rid of it. Like oh. 
Well, here we go. The last test of the day. As I'm entering my closet, any of you that know me, if you know me at all, you know this closet is my kryptonite. I have the hardest time keeping my clothes decluttered. Well, the other day I was in here and I actually said it out loud. I said, I don't even remember the last time I wore those capris. Well, if I said it, that's probably a good sign. It's time to test and see how often I actually do wear a lot of these. So I am doing the trick where you turn the hanger the other direction every time I wear a pair of these. So if I get through the spring and summer season and I haven't turned the hanger, well, I think that's my answer. It's time to get rid of some of these things. This next tip is all about math. It's a super simple one. It's just remembering if you bring one item in, be prepared to take one item out. Or if you're feeling crazy and you bring one item in, take two items out to help you stay decluttered. Now, you have heard this tip used a lot, especially when people are working on their closets. They say, oh, you brought in a new blouse. You need to take out a new blouse. But we forget we can use this same one-in-one -one rule with everything else in our home like books or home decor, anything you may purchase. And you know, sometimes if you keep that one-in-one -one rule in your mind when you're shopping, and maybe you do see a great decor piece, or you do see a great book, if you think, what am I prepared to give up if I bring this into my home? It may stop you from that unnecessary purchase. I don't know, sometimes it works for me, that's for sure. Well, I'm going to live up to my own rule and I did get this new little cute cover up, this sporty thing for Mother's Day. So I'm gonna be putting it in my closet and I am gonna take out one or maybe two items if I'm feeling crazy. Now here's a tip that can make decluttering just a little bit easy, and I'm all about doing things the easy way. And that's keeping a decluttering basket in the bottom of your closet and in a couple of other places throughout your home. That way, if you're going through your clothes and you're seeing that you're not wearing something or your hanger's not turning, then you can fold it and put it in your basket. And then when your basket gets to a certain level, you can take it out and get ready to make it into the donation pile. It's so convenient, and that way everything has a spot. So even in your home, your decluttering can have its own home, and it always stays in one spot. Now, if you have some problem areas, maybe keep a decluttering basket nearby. We all know the closet's my problem area, that's why I keep mine in there. But I also like to keep a donate box in my garage near my car, because then once it's filled, it's so easy just to load it up and take it away to donate because it's right there by my car. Now today, I did just a light declutter and look at all the things that I'm able to give away. Now, sometimes I know when we declutter, we have guilt. We don't wanna get rid of things because it's guilt. But sometimes, if you will think of your donation as a gift, it's just a gift to an unknown person. It can make decluttering and sharing your items so much easier. Well, Tidy Uppers, that's it for today. I hope today's video was helpful. I hope it gave you some new ideas on how to declutter or how to continue decluttering if you're already in the process. And I have always said that we are a community here. So what we talked about today was just the tip of the iceberg. I have no doubt that many of you have great ideas, great techniques that you already use in your own homes on how to declutter and keep it that way. So if you do have some ideas that we didn't talk about today, please, oh please, share them in the comments because we all learn together. I appreciate you guys being here today. Take care of yourself. And until I see you next time, stay tidy.